Why am I having such a hard time speaking today? Uh, it's going to be one of those videos. Fun. This is why I need coffee. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bookish Ramblings. Today, we're doing a recent reads, and I have 15 books to talk about. Everything I'm telling you, I actually did read within the month of August. So, 15 books is a lot for me. I haven't read 15 books in a month in, like, ages and ages and ages. So, I'm actually excited about it and proud of myself and I've read a lot of really good books so I'm very excited so let's just get straight into it so first I finished Storm Rising by Ronnie Kendig I just like finished it in August but I read the majority of it the month before but still once lost to history the book of the wars has resurfaced and its pages hold ancient secrets and dangers former Navy SEAL Leif met I don't know how to say his last name, has been tasked with capturing the ancient text, but a Bulgarian operative snatches it, determined to secure her freedom. When a series of strange storms erupt, they must form an alliance to thwart impending disaster. I found parts of this book interesting, but only parts of it. As a whole, I wasn't super into it. I found myself wanting to read the next book in the series just so I could get some answers to a couple things, but I don't actually care enough to read the next book in the series. It took me forever to even finish the book. I took a break and read a bunch of other stuff and then finally got back around to finishing it. It's not very often I give books two stars, so that tells you something, I guess. Next, I read A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This is a middle grade historical. So this story is about a girl named Gerda. The Berlin Wall goes up in the middle of the night and she suddenly wakes up with her family divided between West and East Berlin. Her father and one of her brothers is cut off in the West and then her, her mom, and her other brother are still trapped in the East. Her and her brother start digging a tunnel into the West to freedom and yeah it's just about that and them trying to get to their family reunited and to the west and everything. I gave it four out of five stars. It wasn't so amazing that it got five stars, but yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I really like um, historical fiction, and if you're into historical stuff and you want to read something in the setting in Germany with the Berlin Wall and all that drama and people trying to escape, it's not a Christian book, but there wasn't any negative content or anything that should be concerning. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that one. The next book I read is God Smuggler by Brother Andrew. It's a nonfiction, an autobiography, and I'm very proud of myself. I have read this before, so this is my second time reading it. And it was just as good as the first time, if not even, like, better. As a boy, Brother Andrew dreamed of being an undercover spy working behind enemy lines. As a man, he found himself working undercover for God. His was a mission filled with danger, financed by faith, supported by miracles. Told it was impossible to minister behind the Iron Curtain, Andrew knew that nothing was too hard for God. Crossing closed borders, he prayed, Lord, in my luggage I have scripture I want to take to your children. When you were on earth, you made blind eyes see. Now I pray, make seeing eyes blind. Do not let the guards see those things you do not want them to see. And they never did. For 35 years, Brother Andrew's life story has inspired millions to step out on their own journeys of faith. This young Dutch factory worker's near incredible adventures testify of God's step-by-step -step guidance and hour-by-hour -hour provision, available to all who follow his call. So there's a lot of like Bible smuggling going on and like dangerous missions and things like that. And I just, I love stories like that. It's really neat to see like all the big and the little ways that like God provided for him and like looked out for him. Brother Andrew's faith and courage to even do what he was doing in the first place because it would be really scary and everything that he risked. Highly recommend. You should definitely read this book. Five out of five stars. The next book that I read is Sir Quinlan and the Swords of Valor by Chuck Black. This is one of the books in his Knights of Arethrae series. I've read this book like a dozen times, but I actually listened to this one on Audible. More of like a audio drama. Like there are different voices and like some sound effects and stuff. Not all the voices were great. Some of the voices could have been a little better, but overall I thought it was really fun and I enjoyed it. Five out of five stars. You should definitely read it or listen to it, however you want to do it. The next book I read is The Delusion by Laura Gallier. I was really unsure about this book and really hesitant about it. It turned out I actually really, really enjoyed it, like a lot more than I thought I was going to. And it really wasn't, like it was creepy, but it wasn't creepy to the point that like, I felt creeped out after reading it, if that makes any sense. So it wasn't like overly creepy is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, so what it is about 
is this guy named Owen. At his school, there has been 11 suicides. People are saying that this school is like cursed and who's gonna kill themselves next. Well, one day Owen is like walking in the woods around his property and he encounters this mysterious man. He ends up like giving Owen a drink of water from like this well and Owen he gets like deathly sick and deathly ill. Well, he doesn't die. He wakes up and when he wakes up, he can see things that he couldn't before and he can see into like the spirit realm and, and like demons and angels and stuff like that. He doesn't know have any kind of knowledge of any of that stuff and he doesn't know what he's actually seeing or anything. But he starts seeing people like in shackles and sees these beings tormenting people. He is terrified as anyone would be. After like observing for a while, he realizes that these beings are what are driving people to kill themselves. He must warn and rescue those he loves, but this proves to be no simple mission. Will he be able to convince anyone to believe him before it's too late? Owen's heart pounding journey through truth and delusion will force him to reconsider everything he believes. He both longs for and fears the answers to questions that are quickly becoming too dangerous to ignore. So yeah, I thought it was really interesting. I gave it four out of five stars. After I read it, I was kind of just like thinking about it a lot. Like it's just, I don't know, it's just one of those books. It kind of reminds me of like the Wars of the Realm in some ways, just because it is about spiritual warfare and also about a guy who something happens and suddenly he can see into this other realm and nobody believes what he's seeing except for this one other girl who is a Christian. She believes him so they kind of team up to kind of like figure out what to do and stuff. It's very similar in a lot of ways but also like extremely different in other ways like in the writing style and the feel of the book itself. I mean it's Chuck Black so I still like Wars of the Realm better. That's why I think I gave this one only four out of five stars. I couldn't quite give it that fifth star, but it was still really good. And if you're interested in like spiritual warfare and maybe want to read something a little bit creepy and on the darker side, this is something I recommend. And there was actually another book that was out. So I got that one on Kindle too called The Deception. So in this second book, Owen is... He be ends up like becoming a Christian, but he's very new to all of this. He's just trying to navigate this new faith and he's facing a lot of frustrations and not understanding a lot of things. All the rules of being a Christian he's kind of having problems with. And then he starts kind of dabbling in new age kind of stuff and communing with like spirits. I don't know, this one got a little more serious and a little more weird stuff going on than the first one honestly but I still thought it was interesting and I gave it four out of five. So there is a third book in the series coming out. I'm not sure when it releases um, and I'm not sure what it's called but I do plan to read it when it comes out. A good series. Really a surprise. A pleasant surprise. The next book I read was Peter Pan and Wendy by J.M. Barry. It was interesting. I gave it two out of five stars. Starting out, I thought this is going to be a one star book. Like, I already don't like this. It's just weird and not my style and just not what I like. I don't even know what to say about it at this point. The copy I have is really cute and I like it a lot. It has like gold stars on the cover, the little bookmark ribbon and stuff. It's just one of those books. It's just kind of strange. Peter Pan is a lot more savage than the cartoon ever portrayed him to be. He is a horrible human being. He is violent and just uncaring about anybody, super selfish, which you see some in the cartoon, just not to this extreme. It got two stars instead of one just because there were like a few parts that I thought were kind of funny, a couple parts that were actually entertaining. A lot of this I was really having to push myself to get through and the writing style was a little bit hard for me. And the way it ended I'm like just really mad about because it's just ridiculous. It's kind of weird that this is such a beloved classic. I don't, I don't get it but you know whatever. Next I read Chosen by Ted Decker. I don't know if this is middle grade or YA but it's like a spinoff of the Circle series. I ended up giving it three out of five stars. Mediocre. It wasn't terrible enough to get two or one star. It was just okay. So it just got three stars. <gasps> My package came. What is it? You'll see. I was looking something up and then I was just like, I need merch. And then I was like looking up all 
all the bands to see if they had any new merch, and they didn't. But then I saw this, and I was like, I need a new hoodie. Yeah, so. you need an NF hoodie. Yeah, I don't have anything from NF, so I was like, I need, I need one of his things. Anyway. Oh, yeah, I was going to read you the summary. Think with your heart and prepare to die, for you have been chosen. Okay. Okay. The land of the forest dwellers has been decimated by the horde under the watchful eyes of the vilest of all creatures, Tila. Thomas Hunter, supreme commander of the forest guard, is forced to lower the recruitment age of his army from 18 to 16. From among thousands, four new recruits are chosen to lead and perhaps die for the greater good. The chosen four are sent on a quest to prove their character, but their mission takes a dramatic turn when they are in intercepted, sworn to secrecy, and redirected to a different endgame. Now they must find the seven lost books of history, books that have power over the past, present, and future, books whose words are alive, books sought by the Dark One that control not only the destiny of their world, but that of ours as well. I just didn't think it was that good. I didn't find the characters very likable. The story itself just wasn't that interesting to me. The only thing this did was actually I am interested now in the Circle series, so I'm gonna give the first book of that series a try. Maybe because it's an adult series and I know that series is really popular, maybe it'll be better. So I'll read that at some point and we'll see how that goes. Next, I read The Peasant's Dream by Melanie Dickerson. Book 11 in the Hagenheim series. The final book. It's, it's a place in Germany. The final book in the series. And I had mixed feelings going into it. Wasn't expecting a whole lot, honestly, but I was hoping it would be good and that the series would end on a high note because I've been having some issues with this series the past few books. But that, that's a video for another day. For now, I will just say... I gave this book three out of five stars. Pretty sure this is the only Melanie Dickerson book I've ever given such a low rating. There's really other books that deserved a three star, but I just hated to give it that, so I gave it a four star. But this one, I had to. You know, I just, I got to a point and I was like, I can't keep living in denial. I have to be honest about my feelings of these books, even if it is a beloved author and a beloved series. This was a reverse Cinderella retelling. In this book, the daughter of Duke William. I know that's not how you pronounce it, but I always say Duke. William just because that's a name I can like pronounce and it's comfortable saying so yes I have changed his name I do that sometimes his daughter is her name Adela is that who this is about? Yes. She's never allowed outside the castle walls. She loves her family, but she sneaks away one day to the market in the town center. There she meets a handsome young man and wonders what it might be like to fall in love with a poor farmer with a kind heart instead of marrying the man her family is suggesting for her. Frederick earns the income for his family and defends his mother from his father's drunken rages. He also uses his talent and creativity to carve figures, animals, and scenes into wood and is asked to carve these scenes into cathedral doors when his talent is noticed. Frederick is inspired by the sweet and beautiful Adela, but he has no knowledge of her true identity. When he gets swept up into a plan to kidnap the Duke's daughter, both are shaken by what they learn about the other. With the heartbroken Adela resigned to an arranged marriage with her noble suitor, Frederick must decide what he's willing to risk for love. So reverse Cinderella sounds like a really fun idea, but these characters were just kind of Boring. As separate characters, they weren't that interesting, and then their romance and love story was even less interesting. They didn't have interesting conversations, nothing really happened, but they fell in love anyway, and I'm not really sure why. Like, where were the feels? Where was all the sweetness? It wasn't there. It was boring, and it makes me really sad but it just was. It feels like Melanie Dickerson, it really, it felt like she wasn't trying. Like, that's all I can say. That's the only way I can, I'm not gonna chill. This is the only way I can describe it. The dialogue is just really lame these days. There were parts about the story I liked, which is why it's getting three stars. But even the parts I liked, I just feel like they could have been written better and in a more like natural and realistic sounding way. Sometimes it just didn't didn't really fit and it just felt off or awkward and then because Adela like falls in love with like this poor farmer guy and everyone's telling her she needs to be careful and who is this guy really what is she doing when she has like this nobleman that's like interested in her her defense every time is like oh but we're both artists to defend her relationship and to defend Frederick. She says that so many times in the book. It's so redundant. And I'm just like, that has nothing to do with this conversation that you're having right now. Why are you saying that? Next, I finally got around to picking up Dust by Kara Swanson. Peter Pan has been like kicked out of Neverland and now he can't fly and so he can't get back. The Lost Boys have turned to the dark side. Claire is a human, but she has like this dust that like her fingers generate. But <laughs> What? There's dust that her fingers generate. <laughs> I don't know how 
has to say it that her fingers produce. She has like dust, but it's like evil ashy. dust, ashy dust. <laughs> so oh, okay. sometimes when she gets like really emotional, like bad things happen and it like can destroy or like burn people or something. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, she has a twin brother who was like kidnapped and she's like been trying to find him ever since. Her search ends up leading her to London where she encounters Peter Pan. Him and Tiger Lily offer to help her look for her brother Connor and everything. She's struggling with like her dark past and believing in magic and having hope and all this stuff. And then Peter is, you know, just arrogant, selfish Peter. He just wants to get back to Neverland at any cost. And there's like a romance and stuff, which I don't really know how to feel about. They never did actually get to Neverland in the first book. So that's gonna be in the second book. So I really wanna read the second book to see kind of how what Neverland is like. Yeah, this was interesting. Um, Peter, he's a little bit more likable, I think, in this book than he it actually is in the original story. But he still has a lot of issues and he's still unlikable in a lot of other ways. But maybe he'll become, like, hopefully more likable by the end of this story. So now I'm very excited because I read, like, almost an entire series. Kendall is really nifty, guys. Like, I have never read so many ebooks in my life. Like, I was getting my hair done the other day and while I was waiting for my hair to process, I just like pulled out my ebook and was reading The Blades of Actar. And I think that's why I managed to read so much this past month is because I actually had that option along with audiobooks and physical books. And it just like helps you read a lot more. So it's been like really fun. And I love having the ebook option. It's great. But anyway, I've been wanting to read this first book, Dare for quite a while. And the series is by a name I'm gonna attempt to pronounce, but I don't really know if I'm saying it right. But it's Trisha Mingrink. It like it just doesn't sound right. I don't I don't know how to say it. But I found out about this series and the Ilion Chronicles by JL Knight around the same time. They both kind of sounded really similar to me. I had them both on my TBR, but then I started reading the Ilion Chronicles and loved it. It was the best series ever. And so then I kind of started thinking for some reason, I was like, well, if this series is really good, this other series that sounds similar is probably going to be terrible. I don't know why my logic works that way, but it just did. But now I got it like for free. So I decided to try it finally. And I was pleasantly surprised how much like I really enjoyed it. Like it was really good. This is exciting. King Respin is not like the true king. He recruited these young kids and called them blades, trained them to be like spy assassins for him. Him and the blades like killed the royal family and he took over the throne and he has made Christianity illegal. So they're being persecuted and there's like this underground church and the resistance that he's trying to stamp out and he uses his blades to do that. So Leaf Torrent is his third blade, which means he's pretty high up there in rank. He's sent out with another blade on like a scouting mission. Some stuff goes wrong and he gets shot with an arrow and so he ends up stumbling on the doorstep of Renna and Brandy. They're kind of at a dilemma because they're Christians and so they don't want to just let him die and also Renna is a healer so it's like her job to help people. Against her better judgment she brings him inside, tends his wounds. So now Leaf is at a crossroads. He's really conflicted and doesn't really know what to do so he's got to figure out what side he's going to be on. So it was really good. I gave it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. Then I read the next book in the series, Deny, and I also gave it four out of five stars. By the time I got to book three, Defy, I was like, you know what? These are, this is a five star book. I think I needed time for the characters to like grow on me more and more, and then they just became really near and dear to my heart, and I love all of them, and they're all really special to me. I love them. And so I love this series now. So how could I not give it five stars? I think I just needed a little time to kind of immerse myself in the world and in these characters. And then I read Deliver. And now I'm in the middle of Decree, which is like a bunch of like short stories that have been compiled into a book. And then I have one novella that I can go back and read and then I won't have any more to read. So I'm like really devastated, if I'm, to be completely honest. I might cry. I definitely plan to order physical copies of the entire series. Just my only hesitation is that I really don't like the covers, which I hate to say. There's been like two different like editions of covers though. Like the first ones weren't great, but they were better than like the new covers that I'm seeing. The new covers, remember the ones I showed you, Leela? It, it, 
I just really don't like it. So I don't want to order, I'm afraid to order them because I don't want to get those covers. I really don't want the new ones. Like they're really scary looking. But yeah, highly recommend, highly, highly recommend if that sounds like something that you would like. The last book that I read in August is Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus by Nabil Qureshi. It is a nonfiction. Is this the fourth nonfiction book I've read this year? So I have like one more to go. Does that sound right? So Nabil just tells his story about like growing up and in like a devout Muslim family. He was just, he was really, really devout in his faith and in defending his faith and sharing his faith with other people. And it just kind of takes you through his life. Then at some point, like he meets this guy named David who is just as passionate about his faith which is Christianity. Even though their faiths are like really different, they still are able to connect over the fact that they're both equally passionate and devout in their faiths and they have a lot of other stuff in common. So they become like best friends and they have like these discussions slash debates about, like friendly debates about Islam and Christianity. It starts Nabil on this journey of like doing a lot of research and questioning and talking to people, reading a lot of books trying to discover like the truth, eventually he comes to the conclusion that Jesus really was the son of God, died for his sins, rose from the dead, and it's all true, and the Bible is true, and so he becomes a Christian. It was really interesting to see into his world when he was like Muslim and like the practices and his beliefs and everything. It was really interesting learning about all of that. And then I just loved the fact that he was so like sincere about like discovering the truth that him and David could actually have like friendly discussions and actually talk about stuff on a really deep level without anyone getting like offended at the other because they disagreed. And like at the end of the book with like the dreams and visions that he had and everything. I just thought that was really, really cool the way all of that worked out and everything. And I just thought it was a really good story. I gave it five out of five stars. I highly recommend it. It was really, really good. I found out that Nabil actually, he passed away a few years ago in 2017 from cancer, I believe it was. So it was really sad. But he wrote, I think, a few other books besides this one. So maybe at some point I might end up checking one of them out. And that's it. That is all the books that I read. Can you believe I read all of those books in August? Like, that's crazy. How did I do that? I am, like, really proud of myself that I actually managed to create a TBR and actually read all the books on it. And not just all those books, but also, like, a bunch of other books, too. The only thing that I am disappointed that I didn't read is I wanted to read either Proverbs or 1 Samuel or both. And I didn't manage to make it through either of them. Thank you guys for watching this, like, super long video let me know down in the comments below what books you have been reading lately if you have any good ones to recommend i would love to hear about them i will see you guys in my next bookish ramblings video